When we started the series on quantum entanglement, we set out on a quest to find a procedure that would allow us to identify if a quantum state was separable or entangled. And furthermore, if a state was entangled, we wanted to find a measure of the degree of entanglement between the different parts that compose the system to which this state belonged to. Now, in the previous videos, we've made some progress towards this goal. So we talk about the Schmidt decomposition, and, and we said that there's this parameter known as the Schmidt number or the Schmidt rank, which we denote as RS, that can be used to identify if a state is entangled or separable. We said that if this RS was equal to one, then we can guarantee the state was separable, and that if RS was greater than one, then the state was entangled. And we gave some examples. So in the case of a separable state, we looked at the equal superposition state that if we represent in the Schmidt decomposition would have uh, Schmidt coefficients of uh, one and zero. And the Schmidt number we said is the total number of Schmidt coefficients different than zero. So in this case, it will be lambda zero is equal to one, lambda one equal to zero. That means RS is equal to one, right? And then that, that tells us the state is separable. In the case of an entangled state, we looked um, in detail at this W state where we associated the first qubit with subsystem A and the second two qubits with subsystem B. And when we represented the state in its Schmidt decomposition, we found that the, the state was composed of a lambda zero of uh, root two over three and a lambda one of uh, root one over three, which means that our S is equal to two, right? We have a total of two Schmidt coefficients that are different than zero. So that tells us that this state is entangled. Now, what we did not discuss was uh, anything related to the level of entanglement, right? So is this RS a, a good measure of just the degree of entanglement? And, you know, you probably can tell that the, the answer is, is probably not. This, this is a good way to just know if a state is entangled or not. But, you know, if we took, for example, the state uh, square root of one over two of state zero, zero plus state one, one, well, we know this is an entangled state with an RS equal to two, right? This is already in a Schmidt decomposition. And if we look at a similar state, for example, this one where it's, again, a superposition of state zero, zero and one, one, but the coefficient for the zero, zero state is, is basically the square root of 0 0.0001. So that means that with probability of 0.1%, we will measure state zero, zero. And with probability of one minus 0.1%, we'll measure state one, one. Um, th this still has uh, an RS equal to two. But if, if you think about it, I mean, this is really, really close to the state one one because it is very unlikely that we will measure the state uh, zero zero and I mean you can imagine you know taking this coefficient and making it I don't know one e minus nine where it's a lot more unlikely to find the state zero zero but technically R S is still equal to two even though that state is almost the state one one. So clearly looking just at R S is not a good measure of degree of entanglement. So then how do we quantify entanglement? How do we come up with a measure that would tell us how entangled two subsystems are? Well, we know that entanglement is all about correlations, right? If we have two subsystems that are entangled, we know that when we perform a measurement in one of these systems, the results of performing measurements on the other system are gonna be correlated to, to those of the first one. And we also discussed in previous videos that our Schmidt coefficients are the link between these two subsystems. So maybe that's the answer. Instead of just counting the number of Schmidt coefficients that are different than zero, we actually need to use the value of the Schmidt coefficients. And you know, to see this, maybe let's look at a more general version of the state that we just look in here. So let's generalize that and let's look at the, the, the state let's call it zeta, equal to the square root of p of state zero, zero, where the first zero is associated with subsystem A and the second zero with subsystem B, plus the square root of one minus p state one, one. So let's look at three specific cases of this state. So when we have p equals zero, 
uh, the state is 1, 1, which is separable. When p is equal to 1, we have state 0, 0, which is also separable. And then, you know, the case where p is equal to 1 half, we have the superposition state 0, 0 plus 1, 1, which we know is entangled. So we can see here that by moving this value of p, we can go from a separable state to an entangled state and then back to a separable state. So for now, let's, let's define our measure of entanglement as how far we are from a state that is separable as we change this value of p. So, you know, if we, for example, have p equal to zero, we're gonna use this measure of entanglement uh, value that uh, is going to tell us how entangled the state is and, and for p equals zero that measure is going to be zero for p equal one that value is also going to be zero and we saw that for p one half we have the superposition state which you know for now let's say it's it's a maximum value right let let's and let's normalize it let's say that for equal one half is is equal to one but then how do we measure this well as we said before, maybe the answer is in the values of the Schmidt coefficient. So let's define a function mu that depends on all of our Schmidt coefficients. And, you know, this state that we're looking into right here is very convenient because it is already in a Schmidt decomposition. So this square root of uh, p is our lambda 0, and this square root of 1 minus p is our lambda 1. So, you know, if we define a, a function that depends on those uh, lambdas, well, you know, the simplest uh, example we can think of is just adding them up, right? So, so if we look at this specific example, our measure of entanglement is just going to be the square root of p plus the square root of 1 minus p. And if we look again at our three cases, uh, p equals 0, p 1 half, and p equal 1, well, we have that this measure of entanglement for when the states are separable, so when p is equal to 0 and p is equal to 1, is equal to 1. And when p is equal to 1 half, this mu is equal to square root of 2. So it's not quite what we're looking for, right? It's not uh, a value of 0 when uh, the state is separable and a value of 1 when the state is entangled. Uh, but it's close enough, right? If, if we just now subtract uh, one from this this measure, then we will get the values uh, of zero when the state is separable and a value of square root of two minus one when the state is entangled. And you know this function, if if we were to plot this uh, mu, it would give us something that looks kind of like this. So basically, it has a maximal value at one half, and then it monotonically decreases in both directions as it approaches a, a separable state. And, you know, here, this, this maximum value is now 1, is uh, root 2 minus 1, but we can normalize this function, right? We could just divide it by this maximum value, and then we will get something like what we're looking for. Now, there's a couple of questions that might arise when, when we look at this uh, mu, and, um, you know, one of them is, Okay, this works well for this very specific example, right? I mean, if we if we think about this this state right here, the states that we cover by varying p are a very small subset of the full Hilbert space that uh, we have for a two qubit system, and you know, even if we have more qubits, the question is, well, does this mu generalize enough? To, to be a good measure of entanglement. And at least for pure bipartite states, this uh, expression works okay. But later we will see that there are other measures of entanglement that assign more appropriate values to different states. And you know this have to do with uh, the entropy of the system. Now, the other question we might ask is, well, why did we assign the maximum value to this superposition state where uh, you know p was uh, of one half. I mean, if we if we think about this, if we have this superposition state of uh, one over root two zero zero plus one one, what makes that more entangled than let's say the state square root of one over three zero zero plus square root of two over three one one? After all, if we were to perform measurements. 
on let's say this state every time we measure a zero on subsystem a we will measure a zero on subsystem b and every time we measure a one on subsystem a we will measure a one on subsystem b well this state is no not any different right even though the probability amplitudes of measuring a zero or a one are skewed uh, we still always get a zero uh, when we measure a zero on the other system or a one when we measure a one on the other system so how is this less entangled than the equal superposition state? After all, entanglement is all about correlations, and here we're seeing the same type of correlations. Well, the thing about entanglement is that this is a global property, and yes, it might be true that in this particular basis, so in the computational basis, we see the same type of correlations for these two states, but if we look at a different basis, maybe the, the results are, are different. So a good basis to, to look into is the Hadamar basis. So let's go back to our more generic example of uh, square root of P00 plus square root of one minus P11. And if we look at that in the Hadamar basis for the specific case where P is equal to zero, well, we have the state one one, which is basically an equal superposition state of the states plus 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 minus minus plus and minus minus so in this particular case when we measure the state plus in subsystem a we get either state plus or state minus in subsystem b with equal probability so what this means is that in the Hadamard basis when we measure at plus in subsystem a there's nothing we can say about what we're going to measure in subsystem B. And, you know, very similarly, if we were to look at the state zero, zero in this basis, we get the exact same result. If we measure a plus in subsystem A, there's nothing we can say about the measurement in subsystem B. And if we look at the case uh, of one half, well, it's the same as what we had in the computational basis. Uh, we see a very strong correlation, right? We measure a plus in subsystem A, we will get a plus in subsystem B. And, you know, same for state minus. If we measure a minus in subsystem A, we'll measure a minus in subsystem B. But what about in between the zero and one half and the one and the one half? Well, when we were looking at it in the computational basis, we were always seeing the same correlations. But here in the Hadamard basis, we can see that if we go over the derivation, now we have this coefficients associated with states plus minus and minus plus that will vary according to the value of P. So basically, as we are moving P in the Halamar basis, we are going from states where we have zero correlations between measurements on A and B to full correlation in A and B, but there's a spectrum and we can see that clearly here. So let's look at a very concrete example. Let's look again at when we have a P equal to one over three. So we were saying that in that case, this state has the same type of correlations than the superposition state of one over root two zero zero and one over root two one one in the computational basis. But if we move into the Halamar basis, now we have this state where we have probability amplitudes of measuring state plus plus, plus minus, minus plus, and minus minus. And these two states are exactly the same. We're just looking at it in a completely different basis. But now if we look at correlations in, in the Halamar basis, what we see is that if we perform a measurement and in subsystem A, we get state plus. Now we get on subsystem B, state plus with probability of 97%. And then similarly for measuring state minus, we get uh, uh, 3%. Now comparing that to what we would get with the one over root two plus plus, plus one over root two minus minus state, this state shows that the correlations are weaker between the two systems, right? We're not getting a 100% correlation of measuring state plus and state minus. So looking at things in the Hadamard basis allow us to see that this state is less entangled 
than the superposition state 0, 0, and 1, 1. And, you know, going back to uh, using our measure of entanglement to, to do this, if we look at the case where P is 1 half, we uh, again said we were getting the maximum value of a square root of 2 minus 1, which is 0 0.41. And if we calculate the same measure for a P of 1 over 3, now we get a value that is smaller of uh, 0.39. So this makes sense uh, because of what we just saw that if we look at this state in the in the Hadamard basis, we see weaker correlations between measurements in subsystem A and subsystem B. So to summarize, if we want to determine the level of entanglement in a pure bipartite state, one thing we can do is represent that state in a Schmidt form, so perform the Schmidt decomposition, and then sum up all of the Schmidt coefficients and then, you know, subtract to one if we want to make sure that uh, the lowest level of entanglement, which is when a state is separable, is equal to zero. And then we can also add a normalization factor to this equation uh, where we divide by the maximum possible number in, in that system to uh, make sure that uh, that maximum is equal to one. Now, in the next few videos, we'll look at more common measures of entanglement. So we said that this is uh, an okay way to get a value for how entangled a state is, but is first of all, not as practical. We'll see in the next video that uh, there is a good measure of entanglement that is related to the purity of the reduced systems. And um, also we said that if we want to distribute or associate more appropriate values to entangled states, we should use uh, a measure of entropy of the system. So we'll look at that in the next videos. As always, just let me know if you have any questions.